put it that way. I won't say I've been around the block or I've been at this, I've been to this rodeo before. I mean, those are old pat phrases, but both are true. And there is a certain thing about having been there for people who are listening. And as Hemingway said, the truth has a certain ring to it. So let me go on now with my little soliloquy. The hardest thing a man can do, the toughest thing a man can do, is be there for his family. Do you know that? There's no harder job in the world. Oh, anyone could do it for a day or a week or a month or a year. Most guys won't do it for that long. They're afraid to have a family. Men who consider themselves strong or paraglide or whatever, they're still, they still don't have the guts to, to live with a woman and have a family. They don't have the guts for it. They can't commit to it. They won't commit to it. And that's why the entire country is falling apart. They don't have the guts for it. Why? I don't know why. I can't give you the reason why, nor do I have a fix for it. All I can tell you is that's why the nation is collapsing. That's why it's falling apart. And I would blame the ACLU and the media for doing it. I'd blame Hollywood for doing it. If you wanted me to say who's responsible, I'll tell you it's Hollywood and the ACLU. They have gone after the family tooth and claw for 40 straight years. 4-0 straight years. Tooth and claw against the family. By the way, in this big campaign that we're watching for the presidency, including the witch on the other side, the witch on the left, have any of them ever talked about family values? Not even grandma. Grandma hasn't even talked about family values, that hateful thing. Do you understand the trouble we're in? That family values have become dirty words? I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'm crazy. You wake up, American Airlines flight from Phoenix to Boston, heart attack. Co-pilot has to take the plane down into another, into Syracuse. Happened 7 o'clock this morning. I, I got some of the stupid things say, well, he died doing what he loved to do? Yeah, I always wanted to be a pilot and have a heart attack with 300 people aboard. That was on my bucket list, man. What kind of stupid statements do people make when someone dies? Can't you have any respect for the dead? Yeah, he's doing what he wanted to do. Wanted to fly a jet and have a heart attack with 147 people aboard and give his co-pilot, I almost give him a heart attack. He couldn't wait to do that. What kind of stupid statement is that? He died doing what he wanted to do. I, pe I guess people don't know what to say when they die, when someone dies. So they get out the balloons and the bear and the teddy bears. That's the American way. A, a society devoid of religion, that's why you see the bears and the flowers on a doorstep where the pool of blood was. That's all. No, no religion. There's no God. So you may as well put like a teddy bear and a flower on the ground since you have nothing to pray to anymore. That's the paganism that the Bible warned you against. Here it is, come back to life. You know, every time I see a death and I see the, the flowers and the balloons and the bears, I say this is exactly what religion wiped off the earth. Worshipping of a stone or reptile snot. It's the same thing. What kind of stupid world are we living in? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Be too slow for afternoon drive on the East Coast, midday, uh, midday live on the West Coast. But I can't get the song out of my mind. I like it. Mostly this, mostly bluegrass. I don't even know what bluegrass is. I have no idea why they call it bluegrass, because I was looking at the, the musicians. It was like all over the map. I mean bluegrass. That means Kentucky, doesn't it? Kentucky bluegrass. So what's the music? What does bluegrass mean, Robert? I don't get it. And this is not bluegrass. I mean, Neil Young isn't bluegrass, is he? He's like a, oh, it's a family show, sorry. But uh, here we are. You know, I did a perfect hour. Here's the thing about radio. So a three-hour show. The first hour was so perfect. I, I got a perfect ear for my own show and, and radio in general. It's like a musician knows 
his own music. From the minute I started that hour to the last syllable that came out of my mouth, it was one of my most perfect hours. I don't mean in terms of insight, it was there, but in terms of audacity and delivery, it was, it was really on the top of the world. So now it's hour two, now where do I, how do you follow the, an act like that? I have to follow my own act, it's impossible. <laughs> It used to be like, how could you follow an act like that? It's like you get up at a big stage and the, the opening act was so good that the lead guy doesn't know what to do because the audience is just, they're, ring, they're rung out. He rung them out. I mean, their emotions are gone. So now I got to follow my own first hour. It's impossible for me to top it, but I'll try it, which means I have to start in a complete different tack, which I will do. So I said to you, it was a weird weekend for a number of reasons. So let me review the week. Now, I'll end the weekend instead of reviewing the weekend. It ended good. It ended with my, I, I don't see my granddaughter much. They live far away, and they came down. It was only like a shock visit, so one night, one, you know, like one day, one night. And little, she's two years old. It's unbelievable. So being doting grandparents, I mean, we got the biggest toys you could ever imagine. Like big, like a giraffe the size of a man, a lion the size of a a man, uh, like toys like that. Like, what could you do, you know? So you got to understand this. There's four, three dogs running around the house and the baby. And, you know, if you're, if you're a parent or grandparent with young children, you know what I'm talking about. And everyone knows what that feels like, a house filled of love. It comes down to that. Dogs bring out love in us, right? What do we have a dog for? Because the world is so mean and horrendous that when we're alone, we let us, our softer side come out with the little animal. That's why you see tough men with tattoos who can break your, break your neck by looking at you, walking around with tiny dogs now, because the women like are mean to them. They have no one to turn to. I'm not blaming women, don't, don't jump already. The women have had to get tougher in order to survive in this country too. So they've gotten so tough that the men are afraid of them. So now they have a, a dog in their hand, a three pound dog. That's, I mean, that's what you see. I used to see big men with like big dogs, and I see big men with little dogs. And you want to hear something interesting? I have a small dog. You know who likes them most? I see a lot of Mexican guys. Happen, I mean, really tough-looking guys. They love this dog of mine. It lights their faces up. My dog makes everyone smile. Homeless people who hate the world like him. Race doesn't matter. Everyone likes him. It was the same thing, man. Just so, the, so the dogs, everything was good yesterday. Ended with the Chinese food in the containers. It's a metaphor. You know, saying a house full of Chinese food and containers is a good thing on a Sunday. But then, here we are. The day before, I planned the movie we're doing, a small movie, which I'm going to have on the website for you for free on October 26th. I've been trying to put together a video crew, and I had a very productive phone call about it yesterday. And I'm going to do a 15-minute filmed interview, me and my morning host on KSBO, Brian Sussman is going to interview me, and this is the thing, is that after that interview, which is going to be posted on my website on October 26th, after that we're going to show you the five winners of the scholarship fund, like for 30 seconds a little bit of that, to show you why, I'll tell you why, and then a half an hour of that we're going to film me walking around my studio in my house. We're pulling back the curtain to show you where I do my radio show, Many of you think I do this radio show in a radio station. I got to tell you, I have like six rate home studios in various parts of the country. And I'm in one of them right now. And most of you would like to see it and see where I work, where I wrote the book, where I wrote Government Zero. I'm going to go around the studio and show it to you. I'll show you some of my watercolors I've been talking about. It's one of my hobbies. Not a big deal. And you're going to get a peek behind the curtain. And uh, that's what we're doing a video on. I'm trying to put that together. That was Saturday. It's all going to be filmed this next Saturday. And it's the first in a three-part series of videos showing you about Government Zero. And it's going to be three five-minute pieces that we're going to put up for free on michaelsavage.com. So I'm working on that. And I'm working on a, a number of other things. I'm not trying to tell you how hard I work. That's not the point. Work is not hard for me. Without work, I would have been dead a long time ago. Work is the only salvation. You ask anybody. Rodin, the sculptor, is one of my great heroes. And, you know, when I was in my 40s, I didn't know which way to go. In some ways, things weren't working out that well. I found a lot of things that kept me going. One of them was work is the only salvation. Work, work, work. It's true. I'm just not one of those people who can relax by doing nothing. I mean, if you can, God bless you. You could just lay back, 
sit in a beach chair and get drunk on a vacation. Hey, all the more power to you. You know what I'm saying? Big world, do what you want. You're not hurting me. I can't do it. Maybe I did too much of it when I was young. I mean, when I was 18, 19, I could party. I knew how to do it. I know how to go to, you know, hang out with my friends, <clears throat> do nothing, just drink alcohol on a beach. We did it. But at a certain point, you know, you, know, you just can't do that. What's the point? So without going further into that, so that was Saturday and Sunday. And there were up other highs and lows. I was extremely, extremely, extremely emotional this weekend. There's something going on in the moon, something going on in the stars, something going on with the tides. And as I said to you, yesterday afternoon around 3 o'clock, I had taken a nap. And I woke up and this thought was in my mind. If floors had locks, I'd seal mine shut to keep from falling into hell. Why did it come to my mind? I don't know. What do I know? Subconscious? You know, many years ago, I had a friend. He was a wonderful guy. I loved him. He died a number of years ago. He was a parapsychologist. He was way into, you know, Marburg. He was into all these diseases like Ebola in Africa. He was a malariologist. Great man. I loved him because he had a, a joy of living. Trained, classically trained, London School of, of, uh, uh, of, I think, Tropical Medicine. Top of the scale. Great guy. He was originally from New York. Down guy. Just simple guy to talk to, but well-educated and never forgot his origins and knew how to have a good time. So he once said to me, as he got to know me, he said, you know, Michael, he says, the thing about you is that there's no barrier between your conscious and your subconscious. I said, is that a deficit or is it what we're trying to say? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know how you do it. He said, I don't know how you can handle it. I said, well, that's my problem. What are you worried about? <laughs> you know, a lot of people are afraid of what's inside them. And I'm not here to lecture you and say, let it all hang out. I didn't say that. But if you want to be creative, you better learn what's inside of you or else whatever you're creating is, is not going to be really very interesting. That's just the background. That's all. One dimension, two dimension, three dimension, four. It's like a guitar, a harp, a banjo. You see what I'm saying? If you go to a primitive culture, they made string instruments out of one string. Then some people added to them. They had two strings. Then there were three strings. Ukulele. Then became a banjo. That's all the way up to the Stradivarius. Same thing in every sphere of life. Either you're a banjo or you're a violin. So you can't compare banjos to violins. It's two different things. So let's play some music on the Savage Nation, both from my heart, my mind, and from my soul. And before we get back to the news of the day, which I'll, I'll do in a minute here, I have the headlines are amazing. Got the stories, the headlines. Oh, we got to get this call. Do I have time for that one quick call before we go to the headline? Yeah, I got, because this call has been holding from New York, WABC. Bob, it's interesting that you say what you say on the screen. Say it like it is. Yes, I initially call, uh, called the comment about the Russian and the Catholic Church. You talked about the dark side. And as you know... Okay, you're Bob, listen, you're breaking up. If the phone keeps up like this, I'm going to have to buy-by. Is that a cell phone? Yeah, I said I called about the... Uh, yeah, all right. Have, have a nice day. Okay, why don't you call back 855? See, that's a that's a rot job. A call screener should have done that for me. He's been holding for an hour. So you tell him to call back on a landline. Go to his mother's house and call. Cell phones are not good in talk radio. That's what's happened with talk radio. But people don't know what's wrong with it. The, the call quality was better in the 90s when there were almost no cell phones. Everyone was calling from the house. So, okay, you had shut-ins and nuts. And people in prisons that went with the quarter. But uh, at least you could listen to them. Now you got geniuses. And so, Mike, I want. And, and, and Mike, I wanted to say ISIS because about poot, you know, that's that's why talk radio is hard to listen to in some regard. So if that man would be uh, pleasant enough to call back, so go over to the headline here. This comes to us from Nick Gutteridge of the Express. Co. Uk. ISIS so weakened by Russian airstrikes and desertion it could be destroyed in hours. That's something you're not going to read from Jake Woodpecker. Jake Woodpecker has not been allowed to tell you that Russia's been successful in taking out ISIS. Wolf Blitz is so frightened at what's going on, I don't know if there's enough medication in his cabinet to get him to work today. Western and more recently, Russian airstrikes, chaotic leadership, and mass defections have weakened the jihadi group to such an extent that it would be unable to repel even a small invasion force. A terror analyst told Express.co.uk that the fanatics have vastly exaggerated their military strength 
and called on Western leaders to launch a coordinated